Oh, we, I wish I could just slow mo this down for you guys. Oh my God. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I know y'all see it, man. I know y'all. Oh my sweet Jesus. They hate when you elevate The second of losses, I'm handing them out, yeah, I had to go delegate They feel like I'm floating, I'm lost in the moment, I swear I could levitate They never believed it What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Damian Cryer, and I'm back with another video Hope you guys are having a wonderful, blessed, and amazing day today If you have not subscribed to the Cryer family, you guys already know what to do, man I'll be dropping the links to all of my social medias in the description box down below So you guys can go on over and follow me right now Guys, listen, y'all know I've been craving for spaghetti and I've been craving for chili. Now, I've only made spaghetti probably once in my whole life and I messed it up. I burnt it and I made chili once, one time in my whole entire life. And that was about two, two and a half years ago when I lived in my other place, man. And that was my first time making it. It didn't come out that good, but it wasn't too bad either. So since I've been having a craving for chili, I don't really have anybody I can call and say, yo, will you make me some chili, please? I have to make my own chili. So I went on Google and got a few how to make chili recipes and I went to the store and got the items. So today, exactly, you guys guessed it. I've been wanting some chili with some blueberry cornbread, like sprinkles of blueberry in the cornbread. So since I decided well, I forgot to get the blueberries. I'm going to just make the chili with some cornbread in the oven. So I'm going to show you the items I got real quick. And we're going to get this stuff started real quick. I made sure that I went and got a couple boxes of Jiffy cornbread. So I can make my cornbread in the oven. Then it also said I needed chili powder. So I went and got two bags of chili powder. I probably won't need both bags of chili powder. But I'm going to pour one in when everything gets mixed up. And then if need be, I'll pour the other bag in. I also got this Hunt's um, Diced Tomatoes. And I got a couple of cans of this tomato paste. I also went with the Cowboy Beans Mexican Style, one can of those. And of course, I got two cans of the chili beans, two packs of ground beef. These are kind of small uh, packs of ground beef, but I'm going to be using both of those. Also, I have went ahead and peeled a few fresh garlics. These are fresh right off the garlic clove. I've already rinsed those off. I have one sweet onion right here that's already been cleaned and rinsed off. I've also peeled all the stuff off of it. So I'm finna ready to set the camera up. Um, so this is the part where you guys probably won't see me. I'm gonna set the camera up while I cut up my um, onions and my garlic and then I'm gonna put a tad bit of oil in this pan right here. I'm gonna saute the garlic and the onion before I actually put the ground beef in there, guys. So, oh, also I got this huge pan right here that I'm gonna, once I transfer everything over to this pan, I can just, voila, pop that lid on there. So we have our garlic. We're just gonna cut those up. I'm not gonna like cut them really thin where they're so thin that they dissolve. Just cut some nice chunks because the fresh garlic is gonna spread throughout all of the chili and i'm gonna tell you guys something um i did hear that this time of year when it's like a really high risk of catching flu garlic is really good for you especially fresh garlic like this it's really good for you it's good for colds i know in some countries some people when they get a cold instead of them taking cough medicine they will actually cut a piece of garlic about like this and they'll just set it right on their tongue i don't know how true it is but that's just what i heard and i don't really believe everything i hear but it does sound like it makes sense because garlic is very strong man it's very potent so we got the garlic cut up i'm gonna set that right here to the side and then we have this onion right here i'm gonna make this kind of quick the way we cut this onion up because the onion don't have to be cut up anyway special. I want to make it to where it's like diced up. So we're going to take and cut the bigger portion off. And we're going to make a little cuts right here. Straight down like that. 
we're going to turn it to the opposite direction. We're going to make those cuts just like that. And now we can turn it and lay it on the side. And if you guys can see this, you should really just get little onion dices right out of it. Look at that. See that? See what I did? This little onion dice is just like that. And all this only, me cutting this up, you guys see the time. It only took me less than three minutes to actually do this part right here. I cut the onion kind of deep so I can keep on going all the way down to the bottom of the onion. That's it, just like that, guys. And I just take my little knife and just chop it around just like that. Of course, I'm making a little mess on the stove. So, I know some of you guys are probably wondering, Dion, he's in the bedroom. This is his afternoon nap time. Obviously, he's not taking a nap right now. So, me and him actually went to the store today. I had to go get him another coat because his coat from last year, I think it was a, a 2T. So, we had to go get him a, he's only in a 3T right now. But I decided not, not to take a chance. So I went ahead and bought him a coat that's actually 4T because he is growing fast. And then with any luck, he can wear that coat again next year. And there's a reason why I say with any luck because kids are growing really fast. And then if it doesn't get like messed up, and you guys know how kids are, they spill juice and stuff all over their clothes. And if it's a situation where I can't wash it and clean it really good, I'm most definitely not gonna let him wear it again you guys can see there's the breast garlic right there there's the onions right there got them looking all crispy and pretty i'm gonna set that to the side for now I'm take this out right here now what i'm gonna do is i'm going to saute everything the uh onions and the garlic together just enough to ah just like that and you guys can see the oil in the pan. We got just enough in the pan just to kind of get the saute part of it done. And believe it or not, these are like, you want to do this to get all the flavors mixed together. Now you guys are probably wondering why I'm not using any peppers. The reason why I'm not using any peppers because Dion will actually be eating this dish with me. Dion, I know he likes chili and cornbread. Only thing is, I'm gonna have to feed it to him. Not that he can't feed itself. It's just while he's trying to pick that chili up, I don't want him making a mess all over his outfit or all over his clothes or all over the house for that matter. But yeah, so right now, I have the grease getting warm. And after the grease gets warm, we're gonna go ahead and drop these fresh garlic and these fresh onions right over in this oil and once this right here gets really nice brown and saute giving it that crazy smell throughout the whole house at that moment i will go ahead and add the ground beef in there and i'm gonna let that ground beef cook kind of slow because i'm not in a rush for the ground beef to cook really fast at all good lord can y'all smell this can y'all smell it mm, mm, mm. this got this kitchen smelling crazy it's just a matter of time before Dion comes out the room and says, Oh my God, Dad, what is that smell going through the house? I'm not going to lie, man. These onions and this garlic smells fire. Now, in the recipe thing that I watched uh, on Google, they didn't actually use fresh garlic. They actually used garlic from out of a, uh, you know, the garlic that's in a bottle, like the dust powder. So... I'm hoping that since I'm using the real garlic, uh, cut up garlic, fresh garlic, put it that way, that it really makes a difference in the meal. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to fool you guys, man. This smell is crazy. It's going through this house right now. So the next thing I want to do, I'm going to wait till these get, the, get a little bit brown. And once they get brown enough and I feel comfortable, I'm going to go ahead and add my ground beef to it. And again, I'm going to let the ground beef cook really slow. They said to actually add this. They said add a little bit chili powder to the ground beef while it's cooking in here. And then once you transfer everything to the big pot, um, when you add your beans or tomato paste and your diced tomatoes and all that, they said then you add the rest of the contents of the package. 
Um, you notice I got mild on both of these guys. They had an option, mild, spicy, uh, or hot. But I end up going, well, I guess spicy and hot is the same thing pretty much. But I end up going with the mild pack. So keep that in mind if you guys are making this. And I'm not going to sit here and cap, guys. I'm really happy to be making chili because I wanted chili so bad. I almost called my daughter or my daughter-in-law and asked them, hey, can you make me some chili? But I know people have other things going on. Okay, guys, so I feel pretty comfortable with the way that the uh, sautéed onions and the garlic is looking. You guys might notice the colors change because it's definitely sautéed. It's turning brown. Now, I did add a little bit salt and pepper to the onions while the hammer was off. So what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and add the ground beef. And I have a strainer on standby because it says to drain all that grease off afterwards. And my only, this is another reason why I didn't want to cut the garlic too thin. I didn't want the garlic to fall through the screen while it's draining all the oil off of it. So, I'm going to go ahead and set the camera up and break this meat up and get it transferred. Um, also, guys, comment down below if you guys ever use turkey, like turkey ground beef for your chili. I know somebody suggested that once before. Okay, guys. Guys, I did a cooking video a while back and I think it was like making cheeseburgers with the Cryer family. Do you know somebody, man, I seen the weirdest comment, man. Somebody's like, Mr. Cryer, oh my God, that's disgusting. You didn't rinse your ground meat off, your ground beef off. I'm like, okay. So you supposed to rinse the ground beef right down the sink because that's exactly what's gonna happen. I'm gonna rinse it right down the street. Uh oh, get over here. I almost thought that these two packs of ground beef was gonna be way too much for this. But come to find out, it actually worked out perfectly because I know from experience from cooking hamburgers, ground beef is definitely gonna cook down. It's going to it's gonna shrink up and cook down and it's gonna look not look as like as much. You guys ever make greens and stuff? You sit there and pick greens all day long and get them all cleaned and prepped to cook. And the greens, they overfill your pot. They overfill the pot. It's like, oh my God, I got a pot full of greens. Once that water starts boiling, those greens start boiling down, you come back to the pot, and you be like, man, somebody done been in my pot. Because the greens done cooked all the way down. It's the same thing with ground beef. It actually cooks down. So you lose a whole lot of the, uh, the food in of the pan. So... Okay, so we got the ground beef in here. Now we got to go ahead and turn it down a little bit because I don't want this cooking fast at all. This is one of those, well, this one to cook slow in the pot in a way. But this is one of those situations where I want it to cook extremely slow. Now what I have to do, you guys see the ground beef? And I want to get it while I'm bringing the sauteed onions and garlic to the top of the meat so it's not sitting at the bottom of the pan. Keep on breaking it up. Watching a video um, on how to make homemade chili on Google, it does say that you have to continue to consistently chop at the meat to make sure that the meat is broke up into little pieces. Now don't get me wrong, if you're making spaghetti, there's nothing wrong with having big chunks of meat because, hey, it's like meatballs. But I'm going to tell you, that's what I really got a taste for, guys. You guys know how, how many years it's been since I've eaten spaghetti with meatballs. My auntie was still alive. She used to make the best uh, spaghetti and meatballs. God rest her soul. And she used to make spaghetti and meatballs all the time. And it was so good. My whole entire family used to talk about her spaghetti and meatballs. If my cousins are watching this video, which I'm sure they are, they know exactly who I'm talking about. Because, boy, she used to throw down in the kitchen. I told you, I had a, fa a lot of family. Well, I come from a family where a lot of my family members made huge dinners on Sundays. And if some of my aunties didn't make dinner on Sundays, they would call my other aunties because somebody was cooking. You best to believe somebody in my family was cooking on Sunday. And even though this is not Sunday, this is actually Thursday. That's just a little story for you guys. If you like a little background. You know, 
and comment down below if you have one of those families that used to cook on Sunday or still cook on Sunday. But I'm not going to lie to you guys, man. I really miss that, man. I miss, you know, like I recently missed my family reunion this year. And this is the first one we had in a long time. But my cousin Tina said that we're going to have one next year, possibly. And um, I would not miss that. But one thing I do miss, man, I do miss having dinner with my family on Sundays and stuff like that. Because those are good memories right there, man. And you can never get them back. Comment down below if you still have family dinner day on Sundays with your family. Or if you don't, what do you miss most about having family dinner with your family on Sundays? Because I'm going to tell you, I miss it, man. Okay, so guys, I have everything mixed up really good. I believe I have it mixed up good enough to where I can go ahead. And I'm going to put the lid on this ground beef. Um, and let it go for a little bit. But I'm going to turn it down, okay, a little bit lower. Because this is the part, even though it's going to simmer in the pot, this is the part that I can actually take a good chill for a little bit. There we go. As you guys can see, if you look really close, you can see the garlic. And that smell that's going through my house right now is crazy. So I'm going to go ahead, put the lid on here. And I'm going to let this go for a little while. Give you guys a quick update real quick. As you see the chili, I mean, well, the meat for the chili is starting to turn brown. Um, now, the good thing about this, even if the meat is still a little bit pink as you're doing the ground beef part of it first, it's fine because you have to remember it still has to go into the bigger pot so i forgot to do earlier well i actually didn't forget i can do it now they said to add on google it said to add a little bit of context of your chili powder to the meat while i was cooking and this is why i bought two packs guys now when i do set my meat in the strainer to strain out i'm not going to actually rinse the meat off i'm not going to do that i'm going to keep some of that oil on there um, i'm not going to rinse all the fat off of it because i have a lot of flavors in here now so so that's what i'm gonna do guys it's hard for me to stare this up what, what is in my hand <coughs> dion you want to hold the tripod for that <laughs> imagine that dion wants to hold the tripod guys so this is the part well let me show you here so as you guys see, I went ahead and moved the, the pot. Ooh, that's kind of hot right there. I moved it off here to here. So this ground beef is actually done. This is the part where I actually do my straining of the meat before I actually do the dunking. When I say the dunking, I mean after I transfer the meat from the strainer over to the big pot is when I start doing all the dumping of everything. See, I have all these open. I don't, I don't know how I'm gonna do this with one hand holding the camera. I'm going to have to set the camera down for that. This is where I'm actually going to dump the beans. Uh, I got one, two, two different kinds. I should have actually got black beans. My tomato, diced tomatoes, my hunts, tomato paste. And I'm going to go ahead and just add both packs of this since this is actually only uh, mild. It's not hot or anything. So we're going to go ahead, bring this over here. Oh, I want to show you this too. Someone commented one time, one time I had strained my meat off with the strainer. And I ran water over it. They said, Mr. Cryer, don't let all that grease go down your sink like that. Which I didn't think about it at the right time, at the time. But you guys were right. And as I told you guys, I take constructive criticism extremely well. So I'm going to go. So I got this paper. Uh, this like a tough little paper plate right here. I'm going to set this here. Since the meat is cooled off, it shouldn't melt that paper plate. And we're going to go ahead and take this meat and dump it right over in here. By the way, thank you guys who commented about not letting meat, uh, juice, and oil go down the drain like that. I take constructive criticism extremely well because you guys can be teaching me something. And look at all that oil, which means I would have eventually clogged my sink area up if I did not use this tray right here to let this drain off. So I want to say thank you again for the ones who gave me the extremely wonderful idea about using something to strain that extra oil but anyway guys look at that you can see the fresh garlic in there i mean this is actually coming out a lot better than what i thought it would so as you see it's starting to drip now so i'm gonna help kind of expedite it a little bit 
by kind of shaking the meat up. And as you guys look at all that nasty fat oil right there, you don't see any garlic in there, any onions. So I did a phenomenal job as far as cutting them up the right size. Now the drip is just about done, which is good. So let's transfer this over to this pan right here. Voila, that is perfect. And this pan was already rinsed out before. We'll set that there. Oh my God, look at the amount of oil, guys. Look at all that oil on that tray. So anyway, now we got the ground beef in here. This is where we actually do the dumping. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my little trash can real quick. So we got the first can of beans. Again, this is the dumping part. Get your butt in there. Get in there. Come on, get in there. Start making that suction noise and get in there. I'm trying to get some chili going. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. So remember guys, I got two of the same kind chili beans these are actually the great value these were like 59 cent they had more expensive uh chili beans but you know chili beans is chili beans man so hopefully nobody say oh you should have got the more expensive beans you're cheap you guys know how this is youtube no matter what you do somebody's gonna have something to say about what you did, did or what you didn't do but again some t I said I take constructive criticism well, but you guys know like I know. A lot of times that's not constructive criticism. Some people are really just in real life hating on you and trying to make you feel bad. So here we go guys. All right, all right. So now, while holding this camera, I'm gonna grab, I still have a couple things I have to mix in here. But before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and mix some of this stuff up right here. Okay. Get some chili beans all mixed in there. I hope this comes out right, man. I mean, if it doesn't, hey, you know what they say. You only learn from your mistakes, right? And you only get better with time. And check this out. Even if I miss something that I forgot to get, I can always go back and get what I don't have because... For the most part, the meat's already done. So that's the good thing. So now, we got that mixed up. We got this cans of Hunt's. Mmm. -hmm. Tomatoes, diced tomatoes. Oh, get your butt in there. And this part of the dumping, like I said. This is part of the dumping. And the last thing I'm gonna do, guys, is my cornbread. Well, after I get everything mixed, and get it set at the right temperature where it's just simmering. I'm gonna go ahead and get my cornbread started. Of course, I would do the cornbread off camera. You guys know there's really no big science to making cornbread. You use milk, eggs, butter. Some people don't even use that, they just use water. You oil the pan up at the bottom so it doesn't stick. You put a little flour so it doesn't stick. And you slap that bad boy in the oven. You keep checking on it. If I made cornbread on a regular basis, I wouldn't have to keep checking on it because I would know like how long it takes for it to get done and it'd be set at a perfect timer. Okay guys, so I'm gonna have to set the camera now because I now have, ooh, look at that. It's starting to look like it's chilly. Is it starting to chilly a little bit, guys? It's starting to chilly. We have these two cans of tomato paste and obviously I can't do this with one hand. So I'm gonna have to shut this off for a second, guys. So guys, I just added both cans of Hunt's tomato paste to the pot of chili. If your Hunt's tomato paste come out looking like this, don't be alarmed, guys. It's normal. Uh, I hope it's normal. Oh, y'all see that mess I just made? I gotta be more careful. You know what? Maybe I should set the camera down for a second. Now that I have both cans of Hunt's tomato paste added to this, it says, for every can of tomato paste you use, fill that can up with water. So I took can number one and filled it up with water. Dump. Can number two, filled up with water. Dump. Now take the rest of the contents of the chili powder and dump it in here. I'm gonna be using the other pack as well, guys. So now I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off for a second. I'm gonna blend this all up 
and I'm gonna turn the camera back on so you guys can see how everything is coming along. So I have this set on two and a half and I'm gonna actually turn this down and just let this simmer for a while. Now it says if you're making this on top of the stove like I am, they said you can leave the top on for a while but leave the top off for the finished part of it to let it thicken up on its own. This is a word right here. I don't really like to use much. I do use it every once in a while, but I know a lot of young people use this word right here, but I'm gonna use it for this video. I'm gonna ask y'all one question. Stop playing with me. That ain't a question, that's a statement. I'm gonna make one statement. Stop playing with me. I'm gonna show y'all why y'all need to stop playing with me. Y'all ready to see this man? So your boy got the cornbread in the oven. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me get the spoon and set it right there. Oh, we, mm, y'all ready? Oh, y'all ain't ready for this, man. Y'all not ready. I swear, y'all, y'all know what, man? Y'all not ready for this, man. Y'all not. I swear, y'all not. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, 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 oh. Boom, boom, boom. Not done yet, guys. But it. Oh, look at that. Look at that, guys. Yeah, boy. Hey, listen. I might have messed up a long time ago when I did it. But it ain't. Oh, look at that, man. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Mm. Y'all see how that? Oh my God! Look at that. By the way, off camera, I did add the other pack of mild chili seasoning. Now, this simmered for about thirty minutes with the lid on it, according to Google. They said to leave the lid off for the duration of the cooking process. Why? So the chili can thicken up on its own. Now, oh my God, look at that. I wish I could bring the camera a little bit closer, man, but I can't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the lid off for the duration of while that's cooking. Now, the beautiful thing about making a big pot of chili like this, you can make so much stuff with chili. You can make chili dogs, which we probably will make chili dogs tomorrow for lunch, man, beyond. And then I'm also thinking about doing stuffed bell peppers. Comment down below if you guys think that's a good idea or a video that you guys want to see of me making stuffed bell peppers with the leftover chili. Or, well, actually, and I can make, uh, guys, I can make loaded hot dogs, loaded chili dogs. I think that's what we're going to do. We're actually going to make some loaded chili dogs for our next video. I mean loaded. I mean the chili, the cheese, the onions, the whole works, man. And then we're going to do the stuffed uh, bell pepper. Comment down below which video that you want me to do first, guys. But anyway, we got the cornbread in the oven. Ooh, ooh, we. Oh my lord. I ain't trying to show y'all too much, man. But anyway, that's what the chili looking like. So I'm let y'all get one more gander at that, guys. When the cornbread get done, I'm gonna cut it up and we're gonna do a little taste test and bring this video to a conclusion. As you guys can hear, Dion running around in the background. Just running around having that time of his life, man. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all see that look on my face, right? Let me do it again. I messed up bad, man. I freaking messed up. So y'all know, in the last clip I did, man, I told y'all I was making cornbread. I got the cornbread all mixed up. Speaking of the cornbread, guys, speaking of the cornbread, I did a small YouTube shorts earlier saying I promise you guys would not figure this out. I also had you guys to guess what I was cooking today for the cooking video. Someone said oxtails, man. Now on shorts, you don't get a whole lot of comments on shorts, but somebody said oxtails. You was wrong, guys. You was wrong. But still shout out to the entire Cryer family, guys. But back to the cornbread, man. I messed up, man. I got the cornbread all mixed up and I got it put inside the pan, put it in the oven. So I take it out the oven to take my spatula, go up under the cornbread to try to make it nice and pretty so I can cut it for you guys for video purposes. So I can cut it all, all pretty. But while I was spatuling it up off the bottom of the pan, I'll just show you guys. I just show you, look at my cornbread, man. It's still gonna be good, but I actually broke it up while I was cutting it up, man. But you know what though? 
that's all good because the cornbread is still good. Look, ooh, nice and fluffy. Look at that, man. So if I don't eat all this, well, I probably won't eat it all. Dion loves cornbread. This little white stuff that you guys see, this is flour. I put flour and butter on the inside lining of the pan so the cornbread doesn't stick while it's actually in the oven baking, which was the reason why I'm upset because it broke up and stuck to the bottom of the pan, but it didn't stick too bad. If you guys can see right here, I can grab a whole big old piece of this cornbread. There we go. There we go. See, so it's not burnt. I just picked it up the wrong way, guys. So the cornbread is ready. Most importantly, guys, dun, 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 dun. I, dun, 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 dun. your boy did it. He made chili. Where's my boom at? Where's my chili spoon? Get your butt over here, chili spoon. Dion was in here earlier trying to help me stir the chili up. Look at this, look at this. Oh, we, I wish I could just slow mo this down for you guys. Oh my God. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I know y'all see it, man. I know y'all. Oh my sweet Jesus. Let me do it one more time for y'all. Look at that, man. Oh my God. If I get one negative comment about my chili, I'm going to, whoa, I'm going to say this is real hate right here. Not really. It's not really hate. But listen, guys, before I set my camera up to do the taste part test of this video for you guys, I want you to comment down below if you guys thought I should have used something else. Also, try and leave a comment if you can remember early on in the video where I asked you guys about the turkey grounded turkey meat. If you guys ever use grounded turkey meat for your chili or your spaghetti. Um, also, I was, I kind of messed up earlier. I was trying to tell you guys the reason why I did not use peppers and bell peppers for the chili is because Dion, I've eaten certain foods that me and him have both eaten together and I all, like pizza, like I always get peppers on my pizza and stuff. Dion, he always takes the peppers and pick it off. So I don't want him trying to pick through a bowl of chili, trying to pick the peppers off of it to get rid of the peppers. So that's why I did not want to use peppers in this chili, but you guys, Please leave a comment. A lot of people watching this video who knows how to cook, man. And I need you guys to let me know what I could have did different to make my chili pop a little bit better because you only get better with time. And with this right here, it looks like it came out okay, but I would know once I actually taste the food, man. But I'm gonna see you guys, I'm gonna set up and we're ready to do this little eating party video. Just a small little taste test because the last the video some people were saying mr crier you did not do the taste test for the food that was on the ribs and stuff that i cooked a couple days ago so i apologize about that so let's go ahead and set this camera up real quick guys thank you lord for this food i'm about to receive lord thank you for this day lord thank you for all of my beautiful wonderful children lord i pray that you keep them safe in the name of jesus i pray for all of my family my loved ones my friends and everyone else lord Actually, you continue to bless my household, Lord. Bless my health. Um, I ask you to bless everyone, Lord, in every area of their life in the name of Jesus. I'm gonna make this real quick, guys. This is the chili. Ooh wee. And I just think I was gonna go to Wendy's for some of their chili. I got my cornbread right here. It's a little broken up, but it's all good, man. And also, guys, I wanna say thank you so much for watching this video, man. I really appreciate it. This is a pretty long cooking video, but I just wanted to take you guys step by step, you know, as far as how I make my chili. And plus with the weather changing the way it is, I think this is a pretty good dish to make for this type of weather, guys. So here we go. Chili and cornbread. It's pretty good. I can taste the fresh garlic, the fresh onions. I have to say it again, guys. I said it earlier. I'm gonna say it again. I have to. Stop playing with me. Look at that, man. Not bad, huh? Mm, mm, mm. This is my second time ever in my life making chili guys again 
we're going to have a lot of leftover chili. Um, and I'm going to talk with someone and see about freezing, see if I can actually freeze that chili. Comment down below, guys. Let me know if I can freeze that chili. I know somebody I can call and ask. They'll let me know if I'm able to, to freeze it. I noticed that, that you can freeze taco soup, spaghetti. I think you can freeze spaghetti, greens and stuff like that. Also comment down below if you guys want me to do the video of making stuffed bell peppers. Chili stuffed bell, bell peppers. I may even add like a little twist to it. Shrimp or some type of uh, turkey, ground beef or something like that. Or grounded turkey meat. Mm. Very good, man. It's not runny. It's not loose. It's nice and thick. I needed this very bad. Dion's already ate a little bit of it. Of course, he's not that hungry because he had already, we, him and I had both went out for lunch today. Ate at McDonald's. Well, he ate at McDonald's. I went over to Taco Bell, got me a taco. Mmm. So that is it for this video, man. Give this video a fat thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Also, leave a comment if you enjoyed this video. Also, leave a comment if something that I could have did different. You can also send me your recipe at my in my emails at black underscore dac2 at yahoo.com or DM me on Instagram at Damian Cryer Senior All Lower Casings. Your recipe for making chili. And who knows? I just may try your recipe one day, man. But I love you guys. Huge shout out again. I appreciate all of you guys for watching. All the love and support that you guys are showing me on all of my platforms, man. You guys are amazing. But I'm going to see y'all in the next video. Until next time, I'm Damian Cryer. Gang.